Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. I want to take y'all all into the last time I saw my man Big Ed in New York. Let me explain y'all for y'all go there. This Big Ed was from New York, not Big Ed Hanson from Detroit. This Big Ed from New York could buy and sell Ed Hanson from Detroit. Let me say that. This Ed I'm talking about is Indigo Blue from New York, Times Square, paying about a half a million dollars rent a month, which is about what Big Ed ran off with on Demetrius and Maserati. This boy was paying that in rent a month what he ran off with. He paid that in rent in Times Square at the Indigo Blue, if you know anything about it. Thursday night, Wendy William on the mic, you understand? We rolling like 40 going north, you understand? I'm getting down, running to New York, running back. Big Ed got that cane that come back dirty, baby. He didn't have the bullshit, he had the real shit, understand that? That shit that you drop in there with a touch of soda and that shit jump back 30, not no whip, straight drop. That's what Big Ed had in New York at the Indigo Blue, you understand? We rolling like a motherfucker, you understand? As I told you, we was rolling. He used to tell you, Eddie, you got to come up and see Thursday night. Thursday night is my hot night, you understand? That's what wind me there. Him telling me I got to come up there and see the festivities that's going on at Indigo Blue Thursday night with Wendy William as the rain leader. You understand? This is what's going on at the Indigo Blue Thursday night and plenty of motherfucking cocaine flowing, baby. They let the keys flow in the middle of time, motherfucking square. That's how we was doing it. Understand that. So I'm rolling with Big Ed, running up there, get keys, right back to Detroit, running back and forth. And Big Ed looked at me and said, man, you, you, you getting down, man. You rolling like a motherfucker, dog. I said, man, that's what we do in the D, baby. You turn them motherfuckers out, you understand? Just because you're in the Big Apple, you understand? I got to shine in the Big D, too, you understand? You got to shine up here, but baby, I got to shine, too. So Big Ed said, boy, he like that shit. I'm talking shit to you. He said, you know what? I'm coming to Detroit with you, man. I'm going to bring the package there, and we're going to Detroit. We're going to bust that bitch out. I said, man, let's go. Let's roll, baby. Let's go on to Detroit. So that night, I went to sleep, woke up. He come back and said, Eddie, I'm coming to Detroit, but I got to go to Baltimore first. I said, okay. Now, I didn't cop. I'm finna go. We both is in Port Authority on our way there. And he telling me, Eddie, I got to go to Baltimore to take care of this business. He had a trunk, a lock, and he had got a bodyguard. You understand, Big Ed, at this point, they got a bodyguard. We rolling, goddamn it, buddy. Rolling, chat. Now, Big Ed got a bodyguard now. We on our way. I'm on my way to Detroit. He on his way up to Baltimore, okay? Let me say this to you, Baltimore brothers. I don't want to say anything, man. But every fucking body I know who ever went to Baltimore went down in goddamn flames. Big Ed left there that goddamn Friday. I left there that Friday. I'm catching the goddamn bus back to Detroit, having Craig, Trisha and Craig pick me up in Cleveland. So I buy a ticket all the way to Detroit, but I jump off at Cleveland, jump in the car with them, and they drive me on back to Detroit. So you understand? Because I wasn't going to come in Detroit Greyhound Station 30 like that. So I put the move on them. I would always get out in Cleveland and train though and roll from there, but I'd always buy a ticket to Detroit to make a motherfucker think I'm going to Detroit, but I'm not going to Detroit. At Cleveland, I'm getting the fuck off of here rolling with Trisha and Craig to Detroit. So let me take you through this. We leave, we in the Port Authority. I said, hey, as soon as you finish that, you're, he said, Eddie, as soon as I finish this shit, I'll be in New York. He got the bodyguard with the locker full of dope. They rolling through Port of Story. The, the, the bodyguard is carrying the locker full of dope. We all walking. I'm dirty than a motherfucker. He dirty. So uh, when Ed and the bodyguard get to Baltimore, as soon as they get off the goddamn train, they get jumped. Wham! Catch Big Ed, the bodyguard. The bodyguard got the suitcase, got, got the luggage. That motherfucker, oh, hell no. <laughs> That's his, you understand? 
So these motherfuckers get the bark, the boy, as soon as they get off the train, they get jumped and ran in. So they ain't catch a case up there in New York uh, and in Baltimore, you understand, when it should have been in Detroit, you understand. If he came on Detroit with me, he wouldn't even have that fucking case in Baltimore, and he know it's true. Because he thought, we going to Detroit, and I got the back. Motherfucker had about 10 or 12 bricks. He carrying to Baltimore. He was going to bring them to Detroit. We're going to roll them bitches off like 40 going north. You're going back to New York and come back when you feel like it. He going to deviate and go to Baltimore to try to hit this lick first. Never made it to Detroit. Never hit the lick in Boston. As soon as he got off the goddamn train, the feds had him and the dope. That's how the last time in this lifetime I have ever seen Big Ed. That day, when I got on that motherfucker, went and walked, got on that Greyhound bus at the Port Authority, and he went on to the motherfucking train station, that was the last time in this lifetime I saw Big Ed, and we had been rolling like goddamn 40 going north, baby. Kane was excellent. As I say to y'all always, that motherfucker there in Times Square in the theater district directly across from Marquis Marriott. I used to stay in the Marquis Marriott, get up, walk out of there, and walk right across the street, down in the big ears in the gold bloom. That was my motherfucking man at the time until he ran up there to Baltimore fucking with them motherfuckers up there and they closed the door on it, busted it. And that was the last time I had seen Big Ed. And Big Ed, as I say to y'all, this is not the Detroit Big Ed. This is New York in the Go Blue, Wendy Williams, all of that Big Ed. You understand? He could buy and sell Big Ed of Detroit. He was paying a half a million dollars of money in rent. This nigga ran off with a half a million dollars on Demetrius and Maserati. Tell me who you think was making noise. Big Ed in New York was making some serious noise, you understand? And I seen it, watched it, tasted it, looked at it, and cooked it and cut it and sent it out there, you understand? So Big Ed was the real deal. Hated it ended like it did, because I thought we was gonna run a motherfucking touchdown, baby. I thought he was on his way to the D, the clown, you understand? He went on his way to Baltimore to go to jail, God damn it! Instead of coming to the D, the clown, he went to Baltimore to go to jail. Him and the bodyguard. I'll never forget the sight of him and the bodyguard. We gone, we'll be back, they was so hyped. Man, they fucked me up when they bust me in up to in Baltimore. Cause they fucked the connect up, you understand? So this is real true street crime telling you about a real motherfucker up in New York, Big Ed, slanging in Times Square. I ain't never seen another motherfucker do it. Open up shop in Times Square. Cause number one, the average motherfucker can't afford to rent up in Times Square. Let me just be downright honest with y'all. The average motherfucker cannot afford to rent in the Times Square Theater District, baby, where he was. He was doing it like a real one. This is real true street crime telling you about a real attorney, Brittany Michelle Simmons, a bad girl, dynamite, help you out with wheels, divorces, Anything corporate, property, deeds, any of that type of thing, check her out and she'll help you out. Brittany Simmons, check her out and she will definitely help you out. Brittany Simmons Law over there. Fine young black attorney, check her out. Then you got Jelani's Tasty Table with the medals, the championship medals around his neck from winning all them cooking titles and championships ready to cook for you 420 style or regular style. Jelani's Tasting Table, check him out. He's on fire over there. The young dynamite chef out of Baker's Culinary College, Baker's Finest. Jelani's Tasting Table, world-class chef, and he got the championship medals to prove it. Check out Super Ken, top tier cuts 313, Super Ken, baby. Check him out for this holiday season and he'll lay you out. Check him out and he'll lay you out. Top tier cuts, 313 Super Ken. Check him out, baby, and he'll lay you out. Super Ken. He's out there on Instagram. Check him out, you understand? And before I go, I got to tell you about Clarence and Metcalf, loud delivery. Them brothers is awful loud over there with them 420 meals or them gummy bears and edibles 
order loud. Check out Metcalf and Clans. Loud delivery. They out there real loud. And check out my man Courtney Brown Jr. on Motown Mafia Podcast on fire over there on the podcast world. Check out Motown Mafia Podcast on Spotify. Courtney Brown Jr. coming at you, baby. Check him out over there on Motown Mafia Podcast on Spotify. And before I go, let me lay it down for you like this. Check us out on Spotify. Crime Town Kingpin's Kids. So you can check out what Ron Gear Valley say for yourself. And you don't have to always hear me beating the drum of Eddie Jackson and all the rest. But they were some real get down brothers. And as I say before I go, in the immortal words of Big Bear Cola, the fat man, Mr. President, or even the magic fat man, I'm going to be saying a lot of you.